Hello everyone. My name is Marinares. I am a physiotherapist and a PhD researcher at the University of Leuven in Belgium. And in this talk, I would like to introduce our recent systematic review on the effectiveness of wheeled mobility skills interventions in children and young people with CP. Now, out of all the children with CP, about 30 to 44% use a wheelchair for mobility. And if we look even closer, about 48% from the spastic CP group, 69 from the dyskinetic, and about 12 from the ataxic group need a wheelchair for mobility. And even though we know that the majority of these children are able to achieve independent mobility, little is known about the best and most effective training and therapy methods in this population. So the main aim of our systematic review was to investigate the effectiveness of interventions on the wheeled mobility skills in children and young people with CP, so really on the activity level of the ICF model. However, we were also interested in the effectiveness of wheeled mobility skills interventions in relation to body and mental functions, because research is currently limited in understanding the effects of stress, fatigue and motivation on wheeled mobility skills learning curves in this population. While these are actually very important concepts in ensuring effectiveness of an intervention. Further, we were also seeking answers on the effect of field mobility skills interventions on participation level and quality of life. For overall methods, PRISMA guidelines and Cochrane Handbook were followed. And now moving on to the results. After a thorough assessment of all the identified articles, we yielded with 20 that fully complied to all of our inclusion criteria. There was a wide variety of wheel mobility devices investigated across the studies and also a variety of study designs that we identified. In total, there were 203 participants described across the studies and the mean age range was between 6 to 14 years. Participants from all CP subtypes were included in the studies and majority or 55% to be more specific were non-experienced drivers but also experienced drivers were included. Now, what kind of interventions did we identify? 25% of the studies based their intervention on the well-established motor learning theory and another 25% on the powered mobility learning strategies. And I must here clarify that some of the studies used also combinations of several theories. But further, personalized goal setting was used and also training in natural environments. And last, Majority of the studies reported favorable effects after 8 to 16 hours of total training. So what did we conclude about the effectiveness of these interventions? Well, to answer our first research question, we could clearly conclude that the wheeled mobility interventions had a positive effect in improving mobility skills in children and young people with CP with medium to large effect sizes reported across the studies. We found that both basic mobility skills as well as community mobility skills improved. And the second important conclusion was that wheeled mobility interventions may have a positive effect on societal participation and quality of life. Two interventions that are specifically focused on daily participation and both report a promising indication towards better participation. In eight studies, the benefits were more as a secondary outcome. Three studies indicated that quality of life may improve after wheel mobility interventions. However, as these were studies with serious to critical risk of bias, these claims need to be interpreted cautiously. And there were no studies identified looking into the body function level. Next, although various forms of exploratory learning were encouraged across the studies, most interventions lean towards structured mobility skills learning programs. And last, high variability of outcome measures and lack of information on the reliability and validity of the used tools resulted the comparisons between the studies to be mainly descriptive. 
but we need future studies with more reliable outcome measures and more robust methods in order to develop best evidence-based guidelines for this population. For more detail, we invite you to look up our full paper and we're happy to take any questions in the comments. Thank you.